Hello and welcome. I'm Katrina Green, Director of Property Management at Gray Residential and your host of The Complex, a podcast covering topics related to the diverse segments of work required to operate a thriving apartment community. Uh, Join me for candid discussions with industry leaders who are partners and colleagues as we navigate the ever-changing yet fundamentally consistent business of multifamily. Today's guest is Jay Beatty of Lamin and Beatty Lawyers, and today he and I will be discussing what I believe is actually a disheartening topic of, you know, evictions, delinquency, collection, and perhaps some fraud <laughs> will come up. Re- really, anything is possible. So, um, what an uplifting topic for us to cover, right, Jay? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's it's a topic that's uh, uh, had a lot of discussion these days. Yeah, or or maybe even for, you know, the last few years. Particularly the last few Particularly years. the last few yeah. years. And speaking of years, I just made you disclose how long you've, <laughs> um, you know, been working in landlord-tenant, the landlord-tenant space, real estate space. Right. And, and if you don't want to say the number, you don't have to say the number, but I think you should be proud of it. How long? Well, I'll, I'll say what I said when you asked me before, which is it starts with a four. Okay. So it starts we'll, with we'll the four. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. So you're, you've had, you've been sort of an integral part and seen the landscape change, the evolution change, and I'm sure just the sheer volume, right? Like 30 years ago, yeah. how many eviction, how many attorneys did you need for right, that? Right. Well, we'll, we'll talk about that. Cause, cause, <laughs> okay. Cause you've, you've got a question here. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> I, I do want to say none of this is legal advice. This is just yeah. a, a number that begins with a four wisdom or experience, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I think that's great. <laughs> Nothing I say is advice either okay. for what it's worth. Yeah, right. yeah. But I mean, I, I consider you, you've always been my go-to expert, you know, as we've questioned and just, you know, try to go through different things. And it hasn't always been eviction related or payment related. You know, obviously it's just right. tenant relations in general, right. um, which is why I asked you on the show, because you're sort of my expert. Um, and I've never partnered with anyone else but Lamin and Beatty for a variety of reasons. And so, you know, I don't really expect you to recite any statistics, but what what is what is materially different today, whether it's the process, the timing, um, the volume, you know, anything that you want to touch on? Well, first, let me say we so much appreciate that we have had that long relationship with you. Yeah. And and it's just been a pleasure to work with you for all these oh, years. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> Thank, has it? Has it? It has. It has. <laughs> always. Always. And yeah, you're, you're one of our, our favorite people to to call and say, help. Oh, it's Katrina. Yay. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, you said we only had an hour. So we can do, we can we do whatever. Go, yeah. We could go all day yeah. with that. And, and yeah. I think you, you brought up and touched on, you know, some of the things, um, a lot of the things, I guess, that have changed. Um, you know, you could start with um, what you sort of alluded to, which was, there didn't used to be many evictions. And, you know, part of that is there used to be that many apartments. <laughs> right. <laughs> or rental housing, you know, in particular. Yeah. Um, and and that has grown, needless to say, over the years. And, and the more, you know, units, quote unquote, units you have, whether it's single family home or, or multifamily, the more of those you have, the more failures, I guess, you're going to have as well. And really, we just look at an eviction um, as a relationship. It's, it's a relationship between the landlord and the tenant. And like any relationship, like husband and wife, a divorce, um, sometimes they don't work out. Yeah. And for a variety of reasons, just, just like something like that. But it's good that we have a process in place that helps people solve their problems without generally violence and and that kind of thing. Right. And so that's, uh, uh, you know, uh, the way we kind of view it um, in a sense. Um, And the changes over the years have have been that, certainly more. um, And statistically, I think that's been borne out by studies and, and things of that sort. But you can also break down what I call uh, sad evictions versus 
oh my God, yes, they got to get out tomorrow. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, unfortunately, or fortunately, I'm not. I'm not here to to <laughs> uh, impose my own personal beliefs one way or the other. Um, about this, but I think in the current environment, the, the sad stories are the only stories you hear. You don't hear the stories that, oh my God, they need to be out tomorrow. Um, right. And and so um, you know we get, uh, and when I say we, I, the industry, I think, um, and we're part of the industry. But but even you know us as the lawyers themselves um, get, for lack of a, a better word, a bad rap. For, for not being compassionate, for not being understanding, uh, for not, you know, wanting to help people stay housed. Yeah. Um, of course we do. Um, and when I say we, I mean the industry, I mean us, I mean everyone. No one wants to see um, what we've seen on the streets of Indianapolis, in this, particularly in the last four years. No one wants to see that. No. And it's, it's so sad. It really is. And um, and you're just an extension of us as the landlord. So it's like that's the other piece of it that, you know, yes, you do want to be compassionate. We we have to be compassionate. Like that starts with uh, us, uh, not with you. Because right. by the time it's to your hands, um, for, for a litany of reasons, like you said, you know, it's, it's made it. We, we've gotten to a place where we need to use the court system. To accomplish R- right, something, right, and and that's that's lost, I think, in in the public sphere. Is that by the time you get to court, by the time you've had an eviction, you've already gone through a process, and and it, it hasn't worked. And and I would say, you know, we've got opportunities sometimes now uh, for mediation and things like that, and court order. Well, not necessarily a court order mediation yet. I think that that's probably coming. It feels court ordered. It does now, like in practice. You <laughs> in know, in practice, it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. To be honest, and we could talk about that in, in a little bit more detail. Um, but um, uh, what's going on today is so much different than it was, you know, four some years ago. <laughs> or put a zero on there if you if you want. Yeah. Um, and, and the process used to be fill out one piece of paper, um, sometimes by longhand. Okay. <laughs> Maybe not even typed. Say the resident hasn't paid the rent, the court date would be set within a week. Mm-hmm. Um, and then interestingly enough, there, there used to be um, what I would call an urban myth that, that I actually won $200 over. Um, <laughs> Awesome. That yeah, no, guy never paid. Um, I'm not going to call him out though. I feel well, but like you won I should. It, nonetheless, yeah, I won it nonetheless. That that a uh, court, you know, could order a tenant out or should order a tenant out within two days of that court hearing. Um, wow, twelve days. Two days. Well, so, okay, so... But, 48 hours. So court date within a week. Okay, court date within a week, and then yeah, possession within... In 48 hours. In 48 hours right. after that. So, wow. Nine, ten days. Yeah. Um, Which is how the media still portrays evictions, but that's not true. Just, right. <laughs> it's, not, it's not. It doesn't happen that way. It doesn't. It, on, it, it does in extenuating circumstances. Sure. Which would be an emergency eviction because yeah. someone's got a gun and they're threatening people. And, yeah. or, and or they're just tearing the place apart. Or they've already shot the gun and it's or, penetrated multiple walls. Right, and you've got, right, yeah, right. And sure. even then, I'm not so sure that's the timeline, which uh, these days. But, yeah. Um, it's, it's a quicker timeline for sure. Yeah. Um, to be it, fair to you, though, um, <laughs> I started in the industry in 2001. And even in 2005, I can specifically recall, I drove to the courthouse. I filled out paperwork by hand. I had a copy of the lease with me. So that's not really even that deep into history. Right, right, <laughs> right. You know, right, that's right. not that long ago. Yeah, and, and so that's, that's right. and that's Hancock County, Indiana. Let's and, go. And I don't yeah. know if they still do it that way, but I mean that was also at a time when landlords could go file their own evictions. I don't know if that's still the case or not, but I, I remember I was the one that started the process. Right, right, um, right. Many times, I knew the clerk. Uh, right. Well, <laughs> the so why wouldn't hey, you? Hey, Terry. Yeah. And, and you know, technically, legally, you're not supposed to do that because you're technically, right. legally representing 
someone else and it's yes agree and it, legally, and it yeah, changed over time practice yeah well. but i did do it yeah yeah but that's okay you've escaped prosecution and we're happy <laughs> yes. we, we don't need you behind bars yeah um but yeah so that's yeah 20 years ago it was still that way and and i can't tell you exactly when there was a change but it's been a it's been gradual yeah um but it's it's been a stacking of blocks um the next thing that sort of came along is there always was a rule that you had to attach the lease. Um, you brought it, you said, but did you file it? Maybe, probably not. Um, but now, uh, all of a sudden, somebody read the law, which, which, by the way, we can talk about that. But that's our uh, 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 logo, I guess. I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, on our website. Simple, and, but yeah, and seems effective. Yeah, Read the law. Right. Right. It, yeah, why wouldn't you? Yeah, because it's there, and and that goes back to my story. Um, you know, read the law. Um, guy bet me two hundred dollars that it was forty eight hours, and I said there is nowhere in the law that says that. And he goes, oh yes, there is, because judges just would repeat that, and I don't know even know where it came from, other than there was some statute that said something about forty eight hours, and everyone went, oh cool, okay, forty eight hours, and and I said, all right, well you you. You find that law. Go read the law. Show mm-hmm. it to me. You get two hundred bucks. He came back about two weeks later and said, "I'll pay you next week." <laughs> Not, because there's no there 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 was no such no law. timeline. Right. Not that it right. wasn't right two days, but that it's. It, not it's identified generally, at all. Yeah, yeah. Generally, yeah, generally at the judge's discretion, and I, so I think that's always been true. Although even judges, I would listen to them from the bench. I could give you just forty-eight hours, but I'm going to give you a week. And I'm like, no, nah, uh-huh. you don't really have that. I, I suppose discretionary wise, maybe they did, but they would say by statute, I have to do them. Like, eh, actually, eh, eh, and these are judges actually, saying uh, this. Okay. You know, that's why we all need to read the law. Do you just come into court with a t shirt that just says read the law? <laughs> I mean, is this, I'll, make, I'll make it for you. My daughter works at a t shirt shop. I'll get you one. I, I want one for everybody at the firm now. <laughs> I'll send you a list of sizes. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Preferably black with maybe white or red lettering. Always. Okay. I That timing, that timeline definitely does not um, jive up with what is occurring, even just even just if I look at our own. Right. Like, um, and certain times a year are different. I think right. that is where that sort of like compassionate piece comes, sure. like where the judge is like, oh, it's the holidays. Absolutely. Um, you know, we'll give you an extra 35 days. Right. Well, that, <laughs> well, I, I was going to say being, that was, I, yeah, it ends up being. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, particularly, and we just went through that again, and we go through that every year. I mean, basically... December 15th, the courts say, no, we're not evicting anybody from the 15th yeah. through the 26th. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll go ahead and file um, and get you know, cases in the queue. Mm-hmm. Um, but nothing happens from the 15th through the 26th yeah. at all. Which it, please it, don't it, think that I think that there should. I'm not. That's not the no, camp that yeah, I'm in um, I, whatsoever. Yeah. I'm in the camp of... Eviction prevention, not right. eviction, you know, like speed. Right. Let's figure sure. out how to get this done faster. Sure. I'm trying sure. to not be there. Right. Sure. Well, I think, you know, anyone with, with any uh, compassion is in your camp. Yeah. Um, but we're not talking, you know, again, I'm not here to talk about personal preferences or, or, or anything like that. I, I'm just here to talk about reality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and Same. Way, way things. Yeah. What is. What is. Yeah. Um, and and what was I guess I've sort of uh, described, and then we've sort of beat around the bush on what is, um, but so that one piece, maybe handwritten piece of paper, one handwritten filing has has now become, uh, and we're talking, you know, and and again, you have jur- different jurisdictions. Sure. So you have in, in Indiana, you have Marion County, which has nine small. Cl- uh, township small claims courts, mm-hmm. and their process is totally different than the Marion County Superior Court. Yeah, um, courts, which is pretty much totally different than any other county in the state. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, but but you know, when you look at it, uh, there are ninety two counties in the state, and so there are ninety two counties plus the nine township uh, courts in Marion County that are all doing it their own way. Yeah. And and they've they've tried for years to to sort of standardize uh the processes and standardize the results and standardize this and standardize that and they have a 
you know, I can't tell you how many times over the years they've had, you know, you know, be a part of, of this, uh, uh, what do you call those things? Where they bring people together to sort like of like a, a coalition yeah. or something. Um, yeah, to, to try and committee. Do, yeah, yeah. Be on this committee to yeah. standardize the courts. Yeah. Um. And and they 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 go through that process, but nothing ever comes of it because, no matter what, the judge is in charge of their courtroom and they're going to do things the way they want them done. Yeah. And and so every court is is just a little bit different in in what uh, paperwork they require and what results are expected and and what you can expect from once you maybe have an eviction order. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, when you know is it a, is it five days or is it going to be ten days or going to be fourteen days and it's one of those things where you just have to be in the process and and go to court and know and understand. And, and, you know, we have people, I don't know what day is it, Tuesday? Mm-hmm. It is, <laughs> indeed. We, we probably have 10 attorneys in 10 different courts today. And, and they've all yeah. got to understand uh, or have some idea of, of what's likely to happen given the facts and circumstances and the law. That, that are in place on, on that given day. And and it, it's always sort of been that way. Um, well, I won't say sort of. It's always been that way. Um, they've never been able to really, you know, standardize what paperwork needs to be submitted. It's all what does that court want. For example, we now have to, in every court, file the lease. We have to file a ledger mm-hmm. um, if it's a non-payment case. Yeah. If it's, if it's some other case where, you know, it's maybe a housekeeping issue, we've got to file... Um, the photos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, and filing is not like it was when you were starting 20 years ago in Hancock County, where you just <laughs> kind of walked in the door and said, what was her name? Terry. Terry. Hey, Terry. Here you go. Um, you know, you have to file online now. You have to uh, input information. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, uh, you know, what, what started out is what we already discussed, the one piece of paper handed over to the court clerk is is now just a, a series of clicks, <laughs> yeah. basically, which sounds easier, <laughs> but in, yeah. in many ways it's not because you have to have the technology in place to do it. Yeah. And and so it's driven our costs through the roof. I mean, mm-hmm. and, and if, if you want to do the job the way it should be done, we've spent literally millions of dollars in technology yeah. and created our own technology company. <laughs> yeah, well, so, I, I was just going to say, you've made it pretty easy on us from a landlord perspective right. just to pass that information over. But and, and that's good just because of, like you said, administrative burden. But also it shouldn't be like it shouldn't be so easy to start click, click, clicking and changing people's lives. Well, um, like, yeah. Great, right, yeah. like so greatly. You, right, yeah. right. So you've got, you know, sort of two competing things there. Number one, you want your property manager to not be burdened. Exactly. With, with you know, it used to be you would spend as a property manager a day or two copying leases, faxing leases. Yeah. Um, Getting in my car and driving somewhere. Right. I mean, not, it wasn't far, <laughs> but I mean, like I did, you know, it was still time out of the office. Right, and, right. You know, and, and you things. want you want your managers there, uh, you know, at their desks helping people. Yeah. And making delinquency calls so that way we're not in eviction. Right. I don't know. Do you do that? Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Jay, well, texts and sure. I mean, every version yeah, of which goes communication. Back, which goes back to our point that once you get to court, you've tried and you've tried and you've tried. You know, you've sent them yeah. letters and you've called them and given texts and hey. Well, I don't know if, I mean, I'm definitely looking at it from a different position today. Like, I'm not saying that that's not trying. That's trying to notify them of something that they already know. It's not helping them accomplish, you know, our end goal. So, you know, maybe later we can talk a little bit about some strategy um, to keep us out, to possibly keep us out of court. Or at least just, you know, we're in court because that's genuinely the only way that this resolves itself. Right. And Well, that's usually the case, right? I mean, you've you've tried to resolve (laughs) it before you get to court. Yeah. Um, Just like couples go to counseling before they get divorced. You yeah. Know, it's, I love that you just use the word counseling. I yeah. mean, right now I'm actively um, in a position where I'm hiring a remote position that is a, and counselor might end up being the word, like, I, I don't really know what title it's going to land on, you know, something that's very warm and welcoming to a resident. So that way they understand 
Like we're here to help from like day one, like literally at application time um, and, and giving some other options and maybe having a conversation, maybe just understanding what their, their bills are like. And I know it takes some honesty and vulnerability on the side of the resident, like to trust us with some of that information. But if it is coming from and executed well, then it, it becomes that, that, you know, first moment where we say, we, we want you to stay here as long as you want to stay here. We, um, as a landlord are different and we aren't going to, you know, hold you to some of the rigid, you know, everything paid on the first. And by everything, I mean, you know, it's not, it's not like, um, you know, days in the past where you just had to pay your rent. Right. Right. You now have to pay some other, other income items. And, and I'm, you know, I'm not necessarily speaking just from my standpoint. I obviously understand what goes on the industry and it's, you know, trash services, valet trash services, pest control, um, sometimes package, acceptance right. fees, right. you know, like we, you know, it used to be just like get the rent, but now we have rent and then this other income, which could be 20, 25% that also needs to come flood in on the first. And like, I just, you know, we're, we're going to hire someone that is going to have some really good conversations and help people that may need to pay twice. We, we're allowed to pay our mortgages and two payments, aren't we? Some, some, okay, <laughs> I don't know some. About everybody. Sure, but, sure, but um, I'm just saying, like, it's per, it is permitted, right? And it right. is set up in a way right. to allow us to do that. And so it's like, but but on the renter side, who's saying I'm here to help the renter? Right. So that way, when we get right. to court, we can say, hey, right. judge, this is we've done all this stuff right. to help right. out. Right. Like, sure, <laughs> absolutely. Well, but counsel counselor is like should probably end up being in that person's title. Right. Um, there are companies we work with that use a service coordinator, which is essentially the role as you are describing. Okay. That's the term they use in case you want to go that way. Service, service coordinator. Service coordinator. Mm. Service counselor, you know. <laughs> well, I don't think it's really about service. It's about pay. It's about paying us. <laughs> well, yeah. You know what I mean? It's about finance. Y- yeah. Of, and, yeah. I mean, but but – you're in the, this business, and this is your income, just like we're in the legal business. And yeah. Legal issues are our income, and grocery stores are in the food business, yeah. and food is their income. Right. And you can't be successful if you're not earning income. And I agree. And I, I think, and maybe we'll touch on it now, I thought maybe we'll touch on it later, but um, there has been a, a disruption uh, in, in the cash cycle. Mm-hmm. For for landlords, which which is causing um, difficulties, and and I'm not quite sure how deep it runs at the mm-hmm. moment, but I can tell you uh, from my four and whatever other number years of experience <laughs> that I've never seen anything like it really. And and can you describe that when you say y- disruption in cash cycle? Yeah. Well, so as you alluded to, it used to be you would get rent on the first and maybe you have a five day uh Yeah, some grace grace period. Yeah. Sure. And but they you get charged ten dollar or twenty dollar late fee or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um I think those are a little higher these days. Absolutely. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We like to kick people when they're down. <laughs> right. Obviously I don't. I, but no, I believe no. that that's some of what no. happens and some of what I'm trying to change. Well right. Yeah. Um and and but so then you know, from our standpoint, over the years, um, we would get evictions turned over generally on the seventh day of the month. And, and oh, wow! Yeah, yeah, it was just it was um, pretty quickly. Yeah, but, but that has been pushed, and it got pushed to with with landlords trying to do what you're doing, which is give people enough time because because you want. The income you want them to stay housed, mm-hmm. and so just as a general policy, I think for most management companies and owners, they that's kind of been pushed out at some point to maybe the fifteenth of the month, and now, uh, and again, we can you know take another day about <laughs> about <laughs> what the 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 the. Uh, uh, disruptions that COVID caused. I mean, sure. that's just, uh, that's a day 
Day podcast. Yeah, that's like a separate segment. Right, that's yeah. a whole different thing. Right, but, but it has it has contributed, and I don't think we've we've seen the end of it yet. Even though definitely not. We've, you know, hopefully, I didn't even want to say the word. Um, <laughs> I had another but, guest that said, "I swore I wasn't going to say it today," right, but right, like she, right. it, it's. Um, it has to because it's part of it. Right. It's definitely. Right. Yeah, part we of can't it. ignore yeah. it. I mean, yeah, it, we are um, at the 15th now. That's, right. you know, company okay. sort of, you know, policy and threshold. Sure. And I also, you know, obviously I understand and see when our mortgages are due. So I under, you know, I know why it was like, okay, rent, you know, on the first and you saw it, you know, sort of like trickle in over the next couple of days. Right. But I mean, like maybe our mortgage was due on the fourth. So right, like you're right. sitting there just, Absolutely. you know, um, depending on the asset, may- maybe watching that sure. closely, not, not and, always. And the mortgage but, isn't your only expense. No, certainly not. <laughs> but I mean, at the absolute bare minimum and depending on those due yeah, dates, that's right, why that, right. you know, that distribution, that chunk need right. to be there right right um, exactly yeah well that 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 cash cycle continues to be pushed out you're at the 15th i mean we have clients who are now out to the 25th you have uh the, most people um whether uh, again whole nother story when when the cares act uh, was put into place that they require requiring for federally subsidized properties a 30 day notice. Right. So when instead of the first or second, fifth or 15th, you had to give them 30 days notice. And then it became the first, the fifth, the 15th of the next month. Well, one month the rent's already gone at that point. Yeah. By the time you get to that second month, the second month of rent is already gone. And then if you file on the 15th, it used to be you'd get in court within a week. Mm-hmm. Now it's about four weeks. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're and the new. recovery, like I, I, you know, I don't have any positive statistics to share in terms of, you know, how often we get to that place of filing and then somehow, you know, they're able to pay and stay mm-hmm. normal, <laughs> normal, right, normal right. Uh, phrasing here. Um, somehow, you know, I read an article the other day, I shared it with you and it was from end of year last year, but it stated that you know, in a particular township. And I, and I just would love to see where these numbers came from and what the definitions are. But that said that, you know, 90% of filings in this township, you know, ended up without an eviction. I'm like, "Mm, I have a lot of, I have a lot of questions about where that data came from, because, you know, to your point, the timing and the cycle, how, how would anybody catch up? How would they really ever catch up if we don't even have our first court date until well into month two? Right. Um, that, that does, that just seems like a recipe. So it's like whatever operators are waiting till the 25th, I wonder if that's working for them to do, to, you know, are they, are they filing, are they filing less? I I don't know. You know, and here's the couple of things about that. Um, yeah, you you wait to the second month, the court sets it a month out and then the court, you know, used to be, they would say, I I, by statute, could give you 48 hours, but I'm going to give you a week. Well, <laughs> yeah. now they might give them a month. So you're three months in. You're right. a quarter of a year in without income. Yeah. And and so when I say there's been then a disruption in 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 the cash flow, that's that's you know that's a pretty depending on how many failures you have, um, gets to be a big number. Do judges take? different action and if you don't know it's okay do judges take into account you know the property type like if they see something that's 400 units professionally managed like are they treating that landlord differently than someone who comes in and maybe owns you know a duplex mm-hmm. or a couple duplexes like do are they taking that into account i i don't think so okay. i think you know i think uh, uh you know, basically um, trying to find the word because you used it in my notes. Oh. <laughs> Antidotally. Oh, anecdotally. Um, yeah, yes. I like that word. Just can never remember it. <laughs> um, anecdotally, I don't think that's true. I mean, okay. in an in, in instance or two, perhaps, because, um, yeah. you know, the reputation of, of some landlords is so bad that and the judges know them and they're like, yeah, this, you're. No, <laughs> I just think the vision, <laughs> the perception is 
you're a big operator, you have all this money, like who cares, you know, do, like who does it, who does it impact or who does it hurt right. if we extend these dates out or we right. give people another right. month? I, right. I just, you know, I don't, I, from what I researched, even right. just in my own world for the like evictions that we had in the last six months or so, um, it, it would look, it would look like they think it doesn't matter and it matters. Right. <laughs> Well, from personal experience, since yeah. you brought it up, yeah, because that's all I have is my own experience. Right. Um, who does it affect? Yeah. Well, I can tell you it affects us. For yeah. One. Mm -hmm. um, because um, we get hired to do this work, and the landlord doesn't get paid. It, the cash cycle has been has been disrupted, um, and so uh, for the first time. In, in the nearly 50-year um, history of our firm, we sued a client last year. All right. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry to say, but it got ridiculous. Yeah, for non non payment. For non payment. Yeah. yeah. And I and and it was, <laughs> you know, one of those situations where they just didn't have the money yeah. because there's been this disruption. In 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 the uh, uh, industry, I mm -hmm. guess, which which you know, I, I I think has been there for a little while now, but it's really starting to uh, snowball a little bit. So when I tell you that, and and you know, I think this is is. A, uh, yeah, sounds self-centered, I suppose, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. I don't mean it that way. Other than I see what I see, and and well, I've, and I've, also you probably are under. I mean, it's not like you're glad you're in that situation, and also right. you can probably tell from the volume of work that you had to do for them. Ab they may very well not have it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. A a absolutely. Yeah. yeah. If you if you file a hundred evictions for someone, it's because they didn't get paid for a hundred people. Yeah. A hundred people. Ouch. And, and so yeah, um, there has been a uh, sort of sea change in in that respect, and I don't think. Um, you know the the people who are trying to help, and I think they they have good intentions. Mm -hmm. They really do, but I don't think they understand enough about uh, the business to understand the unintended consequences of their actions. Mm -hmm. And and so you know when you talk about what are the effects, you know the lawyers don't get paid, the pool guy doesn't get paid. Um, the utility people don't get paid. Yeah. Um, and you have you have poor operators who who just you know they're just not good managers, and, and I think you have uh, ones who are, and and whether you are or aren't, if if that is the process, it, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, if if it's you know there's a big. Uh, and I think valid concern about about landlords not keeping their properties uh, habitable, and everyone complains about it. I don't think anyone intends it to be that way. No. But but your income that allows you to spend money on your expenses like maintenance yeah. comes from the tenants, and if you're not right. getting that income, it's hard to fix the hole in the ceiling. I mean, yeah, every, and, everyone, everyone and everything has a budget and that's, right. and that's a, sure. that's a lost and forgotten. And it's like, you would like to think like if a judge saw, you know, and, and I know that they, again, it's just like one week, a couple weeks, a couple more months, or even like a resident that comes in and says, well, your honor, um, yes, I'm, you know, already a month and a half behind, but I'm trying to get the money from such and such organization. Can right. I just get more right. time? And then right. it's two and a half months and right. then it's three more weeks to right. the writ. Right. And then now we're looking at, and if you have enough of those, you are genuinely like, well, I have to pay the utilities. Yeah. I don't want to be on the news. I have to, <laughs> right. you know, that's, I have to do this. Whole, I have to do that. I don't nother, have to. Uh, no, that's a whole nother podcast. Yeah. But it's way. like, I don't have to upgrade <laughs> the playground, but gosh, I, I wish I could. I don't have to do this, but gosh, I wish I could. I mean, there is a lot of, um, you know, will, on our on our side, there's a lot that we can see that we absolutely want to do and should do, in balance with 
that cash situation that you're talking about, um, you know, and trying to understand how to get out of it. And again, prevention, you know, prevention is certainly my goal right now because I can't, I can't tackle it from the other side. Right. Well, you want to talk about prevention? Yeah, let's go. (laughs) Let's go. Absolutely. What's your favorite, um, what's your favorite, I guess, attempt at prevention? Oh, well, you know, we're not necessarily on the prevention side of things, but we know what we see. Sure. Um, And what we see is, uh, you know, the courts, number one, trying to keep people, and I don't know if it's the courts or, or tenant advocates or sort of a combination of both. Yeah. They're, they're just trying to keep um, people's records clean, mm-hmm. so to speak, so that they can find alternative housing if they are evicted. Right. And, and so we have this situation, again, where I don't think uh, globally everyone understands the very delicate economic ecosystem <laughs> that is in place here. Yeah. Although I, I had a conversation uh, with a judge sometime during the last four years who very well understood it and and was like, yeah, we can't, we can't, you know, let this go on forever. Otherwise, the whole system collapses. So you're talking about like sealing and expunging those yes. records yes. specifically? Exactly. Right. Some, I mean, yeah. some states have, in theory. Yeah. Well, you... that's part of it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and so it's harder for you to tell if somebody's a good credit risk or not a good credit risk. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, what they're trying to to elicit, I guess, or develop is, is the inability to to make that judgment so that you don't you don't see somebody's a poor credit risk. So you let them in their house and, you know, so presumably everyone's happy. Right. And unfortunately, no one remembers, apparently now, because uh, it's been 20 years, hard to believe, but been 20 years or more that's that's exactly what caused the housing crisis and and the great recession back in 2006 through 8 through however long it meaning was. not looking at at critical information we, we, to make yeah, decisions we were, on loans we were, and, we were given yeah. a loan to anyone who was breathing <laughs> absolutely <laughs> we were yeah we were and 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 believe it or not when you sort of trace back to the history of that it all began Back in 1992, when they, uh, you know, passed a regulation to uh, ease the credit restrictions, yeah, and and so it took 10, 15 years to cycle through. But man, when it cycled through, it cycled through. Oh, and, I I remember and, changing our criteria at one point. Now I so I was on I was an onsite manager in 2005, mm-hmm. 2004. So mm-hmm. kind of in that timing, and I remember when. Um, there was a particular builder that was grabbing up this land and putting, you know, as many houses on it as right. possible, mm-hmm. and then certainly targeting our residents because of the rent structure. It made right. perfect sense. And um, I was just watching people that I'm like, "You're not going to make it." And I and I know this, and and like stay here where it's like safe, right. where we're working right. with you, right. and then do the home ownership thing right. a little bit later. But we noticed that the underwriters would send over the rental verifications. And you would only have, you know, it was like, I have to get this back today. And I think they did it on purpose because if we didn't respond, then they could just mark that off, like didn't respond, even though right. I'd be sending something and I would say that they had, you know, X amount of late payments. They'd tell me to right. edit it right? because they'd say, we don't consider it late till the 30th. Right. So please edit it. I'm like, right. I consider it late on the 5th. I'm not editing the paper, but <laughs> right. I remember, I remember it. <laughs> and I know how those people, and then I remember probably... Not that much after that, we changed our screening criteria to allow people that had foreclosures because if we didn't, no one would live there. Right, right, absolutely. <laughs> and so it was again, horrible. Right. So, so is is the current environment going to eventually cause some unintended consequences? I don't know. I'm not a predictor of the future, but I can see uh, the similarities between the two situations. Yeah. And, and we're just not that far into it. It's only been the last you know, three, four years mm-hmm. and it took 10 to 15, um, in the housing, uh, single family housing, um, debacle. Is single family having the same, um, issues, concerns, whatever, you know, however you want to say it, like, do they have the same filing, uh, percentages that multifamily has, if you looked at it, it on like a broad scale, right? Well, it it, it 
um, you mean re- fa- single family housing rentals? Yeah, like you yeah. know, there's certainly companies out there that have yeah, 1,300 yeah, homes right, in right, Indy. Like, do right. they? Yeah, that's a whole different new dynamic. In the, <laughs> yeah, it is. But I'm just wondering if it's no different. It. I don't think it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, again, uh, what's my favorite word? Anecdotally. Yes. Anecdotally. <laughs> Right, circle it again since I can't <laughs> find it. Anecdotally, um, I've always thought that um, yeah, if you have a hundred units, whether they're in a you know eighty story high rise or if they're in you know a scattered uh, site, um, but one company owns them all, and you've got you know two thousand units, you're going to have about a five percent failure rate. And, and that means evictions. And then okay. once the eviction's filed, historically, typically, um, 55% of those are going to go away. And then you, so it's 50. Go away, vacate. Per, but yes, yes, vacate. Yeah. And then there's 50% who aren't. But that's of 5%. So you're talking about two to two and a half yeah. people yeah. per hundred. Yeah. Um, Eviction Lab says, and forgive me that I didn't I don't recall the time frame, but it felt like it was like very fresh, like 2023 or something like that. Said that it was like 16 percent of all leases had filings. Mm-hmm. You know, and and it it's probably gone up. Yeah, um, over the last few years, they like sure. to portray Indianapolis specifically right. as being just right. like off the charts. Like right. we're you know top five. Yeah. I think was what yeah. was. You know, quoted and but I was like, and I know you and I, you and I have talked about it before. I'm like, yeah, but that's because when they did the rental assistance programs, you w- didn't qualify unless you had an eviction filed. So I was like, right. do, you know what I mean? Like with those, <laughs> if those programs were set up, you know, differently. And I understand they wanted it to look a certain way. They mm-hmm. needed it to look like these people would have otherwise been evicted, and now they weren't. They didn't need it. They didn't want it probably to look like we have funds and we deterred evictions they wouldn't be able to collect any data on it any other way right but i'm well, just like well that's not fair <laughs> like some of those other states maybe didn't do that right. quite like we did um well there's that but there there was also no uh from a court standpoint way to really track it and so that data was was just for indiana yeah totally worthless I mean, it just was because yeah. yeah. we didn't have kind of garbage. Couldn't, yeah, well, garbage in, garbage out. I, well, but also there were like the strategic filings. Like there were residents that told us to file on them. In the past two years, yes. Yeah. Well, right. yeah. Please file on me so I can get money to exactly. pay you. Yeah. Which, which <laughs> I'm just like this. That's going to drive that number up. Right. Sure. How yeah, can you? How great can idea. you? Yeah, the other thing I wanted to uh, go back and touch on is is your ninety percent of the filed eviction cases were resolved without a judgment against the tenant. Yeah, uh, a lot of that is is simply judicial and or lawyer or you know I don't want to point fingers. Um, <laughs> you can. <laughs> I can, but I'm not going to. Um, semantics, okay? Yeah. Because essentially what has has developed, I guess, because of what you just talked about, which is the file an eviction on me so I can get help. Right. Um, which just seems, can you say ass backwards on? Seems ass, real ass backwards. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you, we're, I, we're sort yes. of on TV. I don't want to yes. you know, use a bad word. And, it's okay. All right. I feel good about it. <laughs> <laughs> if you do, I do. Um uh, in any event, they they now issue uh, orders of possession. Mm-hmm. What's the difference between an order of possession and a judgment for possession? Well, nothing. Yeah, nothing. But it doesn't say judgment. Right. Right. So yeah. It's, it's this order. That's for what possession. I wondered about the definition of yeah. that. Like, how yeah. are we so a judgment? That? Yeah, yeah. A judgment under under the trial rules, you know, has five or six specific points that that need to be in an, in the judgment order. Yeah. Um, and so, basically, what's going on in some in a wide variety, I guess. Uh, of different jurisdictions is 
they aren't saying it's a judgment. They're saying this is an order of possession, not a judgment. Yeah. And how many <laughs> okay. landlords, I mean, I don't know what everyone does, when, but how often does that, how often do we keep that, maintain that relationship post, you know, the resident leaving and go and then continue to get like the financial judgment? Right. Well, you know, is it still, does it happen a lot? R- r- some of the yeah. Time? Yeah. No, okay. a, lot, a lot of the time. I mean, that's, right. that's what we do. Yeah. I mean, we have a separate collection agency that, right. that goes about. Yeah. There's the fault. There's the follow through with that. that. But right. too, it's like, I wonder if some landlords are just like, okay, we got our property back. We don't want to incur any more costs right. or, you know, like right. cut our losses, cut, write it off to bad debt and get right. back to trying to fill the unit. Right. Well, um, so, but that comes so much later. Oh yeah, months. Yeah, yeah. months later. I mean, months later. If, if we have, uh, you know, an, uh, an eviction in January, say this month, you know, the damage hearing, which would be a judgment, a judge, April. Uh, yeah, <laughs> April, May, June. I was just saying, am I right? I <laughs> yeah, mean, I feel no, like absolutely. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, you know, eventually. Um, it will become a judgment, monetary judgment. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the overall collection rate um, in the nation, I think, is uh, hasn't, uh, uh, again, anecdotally, yeah. um, changed much from 15% of, of your bad, but now your bad debt. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Now we, I will give us a little plug do much better than that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> much, much Thank better. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, but these astronomical, I mean, but, some of these are astronomical balances from right. people that didn't have $850. So to to expect right. to expect these like long-term right. payment, or, I mean, like, yeah. come on. Well, yeah. And, and you would think, and I thought, um, particularly during the past four years, that a lot of that would lead to, to just a massive increase in bankruptcy. I mean, I th- I, first thing we thought... Seems sensible. Seems, yeah. Seems. But bankruptcy costs money. Well, it does. Um, and, and, and we thought, well, we should get into bankruptcy because that would be an income stream. That's the income stream coming. Yeah. But Call Nancy. Bank- Is it, who's your in-house? Nancy, yeah. Nancy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I Nancy's thought. Nancy's retired. I've only had like a couple yeah. bankruptcy questions that were just very like odd or technical and you... Like, right. I remember who I know who you send me to. Right. Nancy. Well, Nancy's the one. Hi, Nance. Yeah. Uh, she might listen to this. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I would have thought the same. Yeah. Maybe. And, and that maybe. did not develop. And in fact, bankruptcy attorneys uh, in the, you know, are, are, are uh, far and few between. And, and yeah. bankruptcy has dried up as a source of lawyer income, so to speak, hmm. which, which, May come back, may not. I mean, people would have thought it would have been through the roof by now, but it's it's just the opposite. But and didn't I'm, it used to feel like this, like, ooh, I can wash away everything I've done and I get a fresh start to yeah. then a judge deciding what you're paying back or not? So it's like, yeah, were there, um, weren't well, there some you, changes? I don't know. Yeah. And and uh, I'm going to look at my watch, too. No, so uh, mine, just, mine, mine told me to stand up and I'm like, oh, no, oh. no, I cannot. Okay. <laughs> I will you not stand if up. You want. Not, to, not right now. Care. Yeah, I don't care. Um, but that hasn't happened, and, and I think part of the reason is uh, people. Um, it, it, it's just become overwhelming. Um, yeah. Also, wouldn't it be faster, easier, and cheaper to just create a different identity? <laughs> that happens too. Yes, I, yeah. I mean, which you goes know, to your, you know, yeah. want to discuss a little bit about fraud today. Yeah, um, or just prevention yeah, that, measures in general. Like yeah. we do think that that could be helping. <laughs> helping in what way? Like I see. Well, like in theory, we think that's going to help us have less delinquency, have you know fewer evictions if we are scrutinizing. You know, some of the data that's being provided to us, especially on the pay side, you know, like 15 years ago, you know, you got pay stubs and you highlighted the amount, you hand wrote in like what the monthly gross was and right. made sure that it matched. And then you tucked it in an actual file um, and tucked it in the filing cabinet. And then in the rare instance or maybe not super rare instance where someone, you know, was new to town, you were just like, oh, that's fine. Give me your offer letter, you know, and I'm right. like, my 17 year old can type an offer letter in, right, right, in two right. minutes now right. or chat GPT can do it for her. So. Um, you know, well, absolutely better than most of us. So, you know, on the, 
you know, on the fraud side. And and I don't know, like by the time, have you ever had a situation where, you know, like you're filing eviction on someone and it is absolutely not the human that's living in the unit or, you know, um, if you run into about that? five times a week. Is it that often? Yeah. No it's, way. it's out of control. Yeah. Oh, I'm, how do I'm you, sorry to what say. happens? <laughs> like, Woo. like well, we're suing I, the wrong person, kind of, you know, the yeah. wrong person's in court or not at all, right? They just right. probably dodge. I'm sure they right. never show, do they? Um, I, yeah, that's a good question. I don't, yes, I believe they do. I mean, it just depends. Yeah. I mean, it's like right. anything else. Some do, some don't. Some right. don't know they, they've, and in fact, at that point, they usually haven't been quote unquote caught. Oh, right. So they so, are continuing with yeah, that identity ab- at that absolutely. point. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, all, all kinds of uh, bad things come of that, not the least of which, and again, I don't want to self- sound too self-centered, is we got sued <laughs> because we were the ones who filed against the person who it wasn't there. Ah. Why they sued us, I right. have no idea. Um, I don't think it was a meritorious claim, and we still had to deal with it. Sure. Right? And we yeah. still had to get rid of it, and it still took up a lot of time and a right. lot of effort and a lot of, thank God, not a lot of money. Um, yeah. But again, unintended consequences. Um, Interesting. Yeah. And and so, you know, should the client have been sued instead? Because they were the ones who were checking I was just that thinking and we that. were just like, going, they, going is, on what they gave us. Yeah. Like, Arguably. Do we have, do we have <laughs> the any? The client did not get sued, by the way. They did not. No, they did not. So it's like, do we have any, um, if you read the law, do we have a responsibility to verify? We do it for good reasons, but like, do right. we have a responsibility to verify? If someone comes in and they give me, you know, yeah, Sally, well, that's a good question. Sally do Miller's. You, do you now have a duty under the law to do that? Right. Um, I don't know that that's been addressed yet. This is sort yeah. of sort of a new, it's, it's one of those things like, Technology, where technology is just running away. AI, we just discussed it. Yeah, and 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 people are running deep fake commercials on YouTube and and what have you. And, I love and, that you just said deep fake. That makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> my, you're speaking to my heart right now, and all the things I read about. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and and the law has you know technology uh, you know moves exponentially, and the law barely moves at all and and right. so uh, you know we have a legislature in session right now and they're not addressing ai and we have a legislature in washington who's finally at least got a bill <laughs> right. to, to maybe address it but maybe, maybe. not yeah um and so there's all these things going on that there just isn't any good answer to and eventually it will wind its way through the courts, and and there will be a determination made as to whether you do have that duty. Yeah, and, and which we we want it. I mean, well, we're, well, sure, we want it for selfish reasons. You know, aside from just like sort of like protecting you know society at large. Yeah. But but there's a cost with that. So you know, every time we're here, we're talking about you know mismatch cash cycles. But then also on the software side. Everything everything costs money, and someone out there is like, "Well, you're charging application fees. Like that's gonna, you know, um, in theory, like it'll be a wash. Like just add those platforms." And I and I think that they're good and they're great. I think they're gonna. I think they have some disparate impact um, that could creep up, honestly, because right. if you're using systems that seemingly require a bank account, well, there's not everyone has a bank account. Not everyone can have one. You know, there's, there could end up, I just think that there's some other things I could follow with, with, you know, once we all, once all operators are mostly are starting to use some of these platforms that also cost money, right? (laughs) Take more money out of the budget, but in a good way. And and yeah, well, you say cost money and, and there's, there's the point, you know, people, we have this, uh, sort of, uh, unfortunately, uh, bad cycle going on where you now have to spend more money, uh, a lot more money, significantly a lot more money, uh, to prevent that from happening um, by yeah, hiring risk, the, risk pr- management. Risk management, yeah, exactly. And and so the risks are so much higher, and so you have to spend this money to uh, to uh, as as well as you can mm-hmm. alleviate that risk. But what happens 
at that point, well, you've, you've got to pay for it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so And effectively use it. Well, and, well, and that means you have to raise the in, rent because that's your income. Yeah. And so it's we've got this vicious cycle going on that is causing rents to go higher. Yeah. And and rents while rents are not being collected, and it's it's really not a good situation. And and I think I alluded to it earlier, the the people, the, the tenant advocates, and and what have you, you know. I'm a tenant advocate. I want people to be housed. You want people to house. I house. definitely want people to be housed. But, but it needs to be done in a way that understands the business, that understands what, if you do this, is going to be the result. And yeah. and I, I just don't think um, there's really been enough input from the industry itself mm-hmm. um, to to educate um, people, you know, I've had conversations with with people. I haven't been on any of these commissions or boards for some reason. They decided, hmm. you know, they must not like what you have. Forty to say. forty years experience <laughs> is, is is not enough to, to yeah. be able to provide any uh, intelligent input, um, which is fine because the last four years have been. Very busy. <laughs> so uh, being on a commission of course, or of course anything you have, because else is... <laughs> as that rent, as those rent graphs literally went like this, right. very steep. Right. No wonder. Right. No wonder we have to right. involve you so much. But I do love that you're, you know, it's like I, I probably tend to be shockingly actually because sometimes people know me. They call me Stone Cold Green, but I'm actually very, very caring. Um, <laughs> like I, I care about the human. I look at the moral side of it. You know, just the, um, you know, housing as a as housing as a right, food as a right. You know, all of that. But it's like probably the only way it would get any attention is is the conversation that you really just had. And I think you're caring too. But like you have to talk about it from a business sense to get the right people to pay attention to it because there's enough. Uh, there's enough greed in the world that says like I, I could come in there and I could say, look, we want to help people. We want to house people. We want kids to feel stable. We want them to be fed. Um, you know, we want them to have clean, safe housing to the best of our abilities. Like I can talk all of that in the abstract, but there, there almost has to be like simultaneous, like this can be my goal and this can be my motivator, but this probably needs to be my conversation is more right. about the cycle that you're talking about more about just like the true business health. Well, yeah. That would get more attention right. than right. this, right. which is sad. And 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 you know the uh, there was a commission that created the diversion eviction diversion program, right? Yes, and they're very proud of it. Yes, yeah. yes, and and they should be proud from from absolutely the standpoint of we tried to are trying to We're do something. We're working on it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but but the landlord side. In, in in that whole uh, uh, exercise was mm-hmm. not well represented, and it, it's unfortunate yeah. Yeah. Um, because um, uh, they never uh, really were provided an understanding of the ins and outs of the business, yeah, and and how what they're trying to do would would affect. Everyone, you know, this like again, this yeah. this very, you know, it, it's it's sort of like we protect uh, snails in the environment because one animal eats the snail that eats something that eats something. It it is that um, connected. Yeah, and and you know, to just. Uh, I like that metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do. You okay. do. Okay. Genuinely. Protect the snail. Right. Protect the snail and the tenants and the landlords. And, yeah. And, and, and the uh, economic ecology that has developed over, over you know, you can go to the Bible and read some good landlord-tenant stories. Yeah. And it's been going it's on. Wild. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like this is, you know, well, we talk about the last four years because it's, it's been such a, a disruption. But, you know, this is nothing new. Um, it's been going on, uh, you know, since the beginning of time. Can we talk about what a diversion program really does? I mean, what's what's actually like occurring? What is the action? You know, is it that because it's gone that far, and then there's this person that's supposed to know what? Because I'm trying to hire this kind of internally in a right. in a sense. Right. Um, but you know, are they reaching out to trustees? Are they reaching out to organizations? Are they seeking to help? 
the human? Or are they seeking to ask the landlord for you know level of like clemency and flexibility? Like what's actually well, happening at well, the table? Well, the diversion. Yeah. Well, that would be the first question. Are, 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 are people even getting to the table? Which I, I don't yeah. think they are. No. And and that's because um, the way the diversion program is set up is it, you need the consent of the landlord, you need the consent of the tenant, and mm-hmm. then it's a series of all right uh, mileposts, I suppose. We, you know, let's have a meeting, let's get together. And and we're gonna, you know, thirty days out, see where you are. Thirty days out, we're gonna see where you are. Thirty days out, you're gonna see where you are. Yeah. Well, there's thirty days uh, disruption in your cash cycle. Right. Plus, <laughs> I'm sorry, ninety days disruption right, in your cash plus cycle. Right. The fifteen or twenty five before you filed. Yeah. Yeah. I, well then. Yeah. Well then. You, so you don't file, and you, and you wait ninety days, and yeah. then if it doesn't work out, wow, we just talked about it. You're waiting another ninety days, so it's yeah. it's a half a year. Wait, so the diversion is intended to be pre-file? Or, or, or during filing, just post-file, during file, right, gotcha. basically post-file yeah. yeah. uh, for the most part. You could do it uh, pre-file, I think, Yeah. Um, if, if, you, if you really wanted to. The thing is, landlords aren't, aren't using it. They aren't doing it because of what I just said. Yeah. You know, I'm going to do it. I'm want, just going to do I, it differently right, and okay. on the inside. I'm trying okay. to be creative here, Jay. Okay. Well... Good luck. And I hope it, <laughs> and I hope it works know. out. Yes. No, I think it, I mean, I got, I got to do something. I have, yeah. to, I have to do something. And um, I have to do something for my investors and my owners. I have to do something for sure. my residents. I have to do something so I can afford, you know, to paint the the common hallways. Right. Right. And, and people can be proud of where they live and then maybe so look at that payment differently. So you can afford to pay the lawyers when yeah. you actually need to do it. Exactly. Six months I, later. We're never I mean, going to not. God. We're never going to not need you, Jay. We're never. I am, we're I am never, not. I am not worried about that. <laughs> right. Trust me. I'm never like I not. said, since since biblical times. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Could we? Should we make it go away? Yeah. I'm sure. Everyone wants it to go away, but. Is there? Um, and I'm just talking like pre-file because I just I just read this this morning on like a you know a Facebook group for multifamily. We um, we like to gather to cope. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, you know, uh, talking about you know specifically like well, if we accept any money, then we can't file, so we don't accept money, and we you know what I mean. Like, or is that? It's going to start sounding like legal advice. I don't mean to say that it is or it isn't, but right. I mean, like, well, are some of those, th- like, is that true? Because I think sometimes we have these, like, urban myths, to your point, right. that have been imposed on us, uh, you know, by leadership over time, where we act like we don't have any opportunity to help someone because we're so worried that we may not right. get to file. Right. right. But, like, could we do, is, is there some things there that we could do that we think we well, can't? Probably that's probably one, yeah. and and that is I think the it law, is. yeah, yeah. This par- the partial payments. So what what has essentially uh, developed in that area, so to yeah. speak, is judges are not necessarily enforcing th- that rule, and the rule is if you accept partial payments, then you you've waived your right to eviction. And Our leases say that we can file well, for anything. Well, but. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and, and I've written into leases that if we accept partial payments, it's not waiver. Right. And, and But um, there really hasn't been uh, a test of, of that in a lease yeah. uh, yet in, in, in court. I mean, it's just one of those things where it costs more money yeah. to, to go through the process than it would to to, to uh, not go through the process. I just feel like that's there's things like that that are hurting us because like what? somebody may struggle to budget and right. they may get paid twice a month, but they may not qualify for right. some of the like flex or something yeah. out that's well, out there. Well, some courts are are essentially um, uh, ignoring. I guess is the best way to. I don't know if it's the best way. Yeah. It's a way <laughs> to it's state anyway. it. Right. And and that particular rule law of saying, okay, well, you, in fact, they are creating, essentially creating payment plans for the resident. Okay. Yeah. So it's almost um, because no one really is taking advantage, if you will, if you want to call what's been put in place um, as far as the... Uh, formal eviction diversion program, the courts themselves are sort of uh, doing their own 
eviction diversion program by mm-hmm. when people are coming to court, they're saying, okay, well, we're going to get, we're going to give you till next week because you're telling me you can get to next week. Right. Well, we'll continue this hearing the next week and see where you are. Yeah. And then if they haven't been able to get things taken care of by that week, many courts are giving them another week. Mm-hmm. Plus late fees, plus filing fees, yeah, court well, costs, legal fees. Yeah. Well, the thing about that is if they don't get it done within a reasonable period of time and yeah. and, and everyone's own perception is going to be what's reasonable. Yeah. You know, a week seems reasonable to me. I don't know. But, you know, uh, the, essentially you're you're creating a new agreement. Yeah. When when the first agreement's already been breached and now you've got a new agreement and that agreement's been breached and now we've got a new agreement and that agreement's been breached and again it it for you it it comes down to the cash cycle. Right. And 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 um you know once that's been disrupted it it causes all kinds of problems. You can't like you said, fix things or paint this or paint that yeah. or pay your lawyers. Um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I, I didn't finish my thought on that, but I'm, I'm going to just because this, I am being self-interested here. I will admit it. Yeah. While we did sue one client for the first time in 50 years, yeah. I probably have 10 to 15 right now. I could also sue. That are but susceptible. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 we're doing our own sort of, a bitch, diversion plan. Diversion plan. Exactly. <laughs> you yes. got your own diversion yeah. plan. Going yeah. On. Yeah. And and before we sued the one client, six months diversion plan. Yeah. And and you know I want to since we're probably running out a little bit of a time. I, I want to just. There's no um, there's no limits. I've definitely gone past an hour and oh, six minutes. Yeah. Someone that cares is well, going to stick with us. To are the you, end. Are they? Well, the end might yeah. be tomorrow. So yeah. Well. Yeah. We got to cut it off somewhere. Right. Um, but I, I I want to since you know it's a forum. Um, address it, which is you have great landlords, as as yeah. we know, and and this yeah. company, Gray Residential, is one. You have horrible ones, mm. um, and and everyone I think in in this city who's in this business and and the courts and and you know the state and the mayor and everyone else knows we had a bad bad operator here, and just one. Well, one public one, one very one public, very public one, one, very one public that one. you know uh, ultimately owed the gas company millions of dollars. Yeah, and and so I think the gas company thought they had their own diversion program going. Right. What the gas company didn't realize is these people are crooks. Yeah. And they should just be in jail. Yeah. And we don't have anybody prosecuting that kind of financial theft, and and that's on. I don't know who that's on. I I will candidly admit I tried to get people interested in prosecuting those people yeah because those are the people who are causing the uh, the good people to to be put under a microscope that 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 is not needed mm-hmm. um, for them absolutely yeah. microscope should have been there right um, and and that was a cancer that got missed and and didn't get cut out until it was too late and hundreds well thousands actually of people's lives were were upset yeah and and then the instant response was okay well let's figure out how to legislate and make sure that all landlords you know like like they like funny how fast that they wanted to work on you know the utility side and how to handle this and for the good operators right right you know yeah. but then there's other things that we're yeah. not going well, to tackle that right not today <laughs> pick and choose uh, right unintended consequences yeah. and 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 it, so it's it's caused some unintended consequences that have have not been uh, beneficial uh, for for the good landlords yeah. and ultimately um you know Bob Gray in our office. I certainly do. Of LB Gray, yeah. uh, debt collection agency. He and I sit around like, kind of like this, only no one listening, yeah. and, and talk about how what good intentions people have, but how they're hurting the people that they're actually trying to help. Yeah. And then if they understood it better, I don't want to say they would stop trying to help, but they would look for different solutions. Different avenues. Yeah. Yeah. And and yeah. I think we all need to, to be part of that and looking mm-hmm. for the different solution. And and 
maybe uh, this would be a good way to wrap it up. I, I watched the movie The Martian re- recently just okay. for the second time. I never watch a movie two times, but this <laughs> happened to be <laughs> on. I? How can you not? And, you know, the, the main theme of that whole movie is work the problem. And, and we've got some problems, mm-hmm. and we need to work the problem. And you, as you said, need to work the problem for your investors and for your tenants and for your employees and, and, and everyone else. Yeah. And, and so we've been working the problem, um, but, but to sort of analogize to the movie The Martian where he, he grows his own potatoes, um, <laughs> but the storm blows away his... his uh, his little farm, and now he's got a new problem, and and I think that's what's happened a little bit. Yeah. We've 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 gone down the road of of working the problem. We've chosen some avenues that we thought were going to work, but they're they're exacerbating the problem. They're not solving it. Yeah, so. I also just think like you know it's not. Uh we're not going to hit a bullseye and think that we can, you know, just do fraud prevention software and that's going to fix it. Or we can just, you know, offer third party programs that, you know, maybe give some more flexible pay, which I think flex is great personally and saw a lot of success in it, um, you know, in certain areas, but like we have to, we have to hit it from every possible angle and not just from one at a time. One at a time is not, like it's just not it's just not working. And if I'm being, you know, transparent, when I started email you about this topic, I think one of my emails right after that was, you know, I ran some reports for and I ran a move out report. So it's not like this was going to show me, you know, how many people we filed on but stayed. I only could see if they had vacated and the percentage was um like my heart sank for how many failure to pay exits we had. And I'm just like, to your point from a business sense, um, this is never going to work. And I, and I care deeply about the communities and we say in the office all the time, like um, Spencer Gray will say like, you know, let's find the win-win. And so like, that's definitely like the big quest right now is to find the win-win. Like how can we keep people housed also pay our bills. No offense. Stop giving so much money to the attorneys. <laughs> um, well, trust me, some people have stopped. <laughs> well, I mean, I, it's never going to go away completely. But, you know, I guess I just want to, you know, in, in theory, on wrapping up, like, I think we have to be creative. I think we have to be really honest with ourselves. I think we have to you know, I was hiring for this position. I think I told you about, and maybe counselor becomes part of the title. I don't really know. I think I, I think I um, put it out there as like resident pay and delinquency specialist remote. That's a key word right there. Remote. Right. Everybody right, needs right, to work right, remote. Right. Um, why, why wouldn't they want to come to this office? I know, right? This place is amazing. Mm. Um, but in in the process of that, I had I had so many applicants. It's funny, like I can look at my dashboard right now, and maybe I have a leasing position open, right? And I'll have like twelve applications for that. Maintenance supervisor, I'll have six. Uh, remote resident, pay and delinquency specialist, eighty four. These are real numbers, I'm not, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just like, wow, like everybody wants to really, you know. And, and I'm like, well, remote obviously made a big, you know, made a big dent in it. But you know, I asked them questions. They had to answer four questions, and I always make people write to me, like a resume. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not saying that it's not an accurate portrayal. I want to see how you communicate and I want to see how your mind works. And so the questions were, what do you know, why do you believe that people get behind on rent? Mm -hmm. Introduce yourself, you know, knowing what the overall, the overreaching goal is, what book are you reading? You know, like some things like that. And, and interesting, you know, I would probably say half of them were in this sort of like mindset of, lease, um, you know, lease compliance. It was all, well, I would remind them when it's due. I would remind them that they have to pay all their fees. I would remind them that this, you know, I would talk to them about, you know, whatever. And I was just like, well, that that's not working. (laughs) So, you know, and not necessarily like saying that they couldn't still be great at this job, but just saying like, I could tell that there are a lot of people in this industry that are just trained and conditioned to just be like, no rent is due on the first. And if you didn't, if you didn't get it in, 
how are you going to figure that out? You know, not not like from a position of like, well, let's figure it out. Right. Let's right. try to do better. Right. So I'm just trying to be creative and offer some different ways, different um, a different cadence to pay that still gets my bills paid, <laughs> right. my mortgage right. paid, sure. um, a different cadence to pay, and then you know a more human connected to another human and just saying, hey, tell me about your pay cycle. Tell me about how you budget yourself. Like, you know, right. can can we accept a couple of paint, you know, can we do this a different, a different way than we've done it all along and win? Well, and yeah. And what you're talking about is every situation is different and and you're looking at, um, uh, uh, like you said, a person to person, um, their life basically their life. Yeah. Well said. (laughs) Well, I want to, if we can, Finish, yeah. finish with a absolutely. Uh, you, can, you can do whatever you want. Story. Yes, I'm ready. I love a story. <laughs> so I have to. Uh, I have to say, uh, all. Uh, uh, what do you call those things? Uh, if you don't know the word anecdotally I, by now, no, I'm, I'm not on that word. <laughs> I, 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 I want to uh, uh, be transparent. I guess. Yeah. I I do not know Mark Cuban. Never met him in my life. Okay. Um, but we have, we were in school at the same time. And so we have many joint acquaintances okay. and friends. Okay. I mean, I have good friends who are his good friends. and But we've never met and I don't know. But I do know the story, which um, when he first left Indiana University or Bloomington, I guess, uh, after he graduated, he moved to Dallas. And he tells this story, which I've seen him tell this story. Yeah. So I'm not... Number one, making it up. Um, (laughs) But I had heard it before I heard it from him. Um, He moved to Dallas. He moved into an apartment with five other people in a two-bedroom, I think, and they were sleeping on mattresses and what have you. Yeah. And so um, eventually, um, you know, they would all put together the rent and pay the rent. And then one month came around and... um, I only know this because the person who did it was my fraternity brother. He pocketed the rent. Oh. And joined the Air Force. Okay. I mean, he needed. He and needed so there it. was future multi billionaire Mark Cuban about to be evicted. Yeah. And and so I just use that as an example of of that's what was going on in his life mm-hmm. on that day. And I don't think they actually got evicted. I think they pulled together among yeah, them figured it out figured it out and, and and had to pay double I guess um, but something like that can be going on in someone's life and is that worth an extra week or two sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> if your roommate walk, walks out with the yeah with the rent I'd give somebody another week or two um, right but so it depends on circumstances the, the problem with that of course is is you you might eventually Touch up upon uh, fair housing issues. I was just going to yeah. say, you and I not, could do a whole separate one about well, fair well, housing. Well, yes, we can, and I'd yeah. be happy to. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's another like guardrail that right. landlords would just say, look, we're we're safer. You know, we're not better off, but we're safer in right. this space right. where we don't pay. You know, we don't. But I just think you know, fair can also mean offering, and th- and this is probably where my thought process right now is. You know, I'm going to offer these three options. These should work for. You know, ninety nine percent of the people that sure. walk through this door, I'm going to let them choose it, and then and then adhere to it, and I, and as long as that's being done, you know, universally, I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything wrong to let them to let them pick. It wasn't right. wrong for me to let them pick a this two bedroom versus that two bedroom, right. and I look at the right. payment plan as no different than that. Right. right. As long as I can document it, you know, <laughs> policies, document have it everything. in my you resident screening criteria. I'm really good at that. I'm really good. At it. If there's anything I've learned um, from Jay Beatty over the years, you know, it's like, um, and I do just appreciate that I can, you know, call you and bounce something off. And I try to come with a solution. I try to come with this, like, hey Jay, this is what I this is what I want to do. And sometimes I've tried to vet my own. Um, you know, like like pick apart my own plan first before I get right, to you. My right. favorite thing, though, is that every time I ask you a question, your response is laughter. <laughs> Just like that. Oh, like that. Just mm. like that. Every mm. time, you know, setup. I'll call you. I feel like it's like you're um, – I think you think what you laugh and it's my favorite. It's just one of my favorite things. Like I'll call and hey, Jay, 
any question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So much fun. All right. So we're going to end with a laugh. Um, thank Why you so we? much. If you if you want to be a return guest, and if we want to talk about fair housing or something like that, we can absolutely do that. We can talk about whatever you want. I love it. Okay. okay. Well, uh, thank you for coming on the show, and Thanks don't for forget um, to you know like and subscribe and uh, listen regularly. I think this I, is like episode ten or something. So really, I only got number ten. I got the call at ten. Yeah. Oh. You're early. Good job. Her. Thanks, everyone.